The Texas Hill Country floods of July 4th, 2025 were among one of the worst floods in the state in recent memory. In the middle of the night, floodwaters swept through Camp Mystic, 14 miles west of Kerrville, along the South Fork Guadalupe River. The total impact from this event is not clear at the time of this video, but media reports indicate at least 80 fatalities. Over 850 people across the hill country had to be rescued. Severe flash floods are not unprecedented in the Texas hill country. In fact, the central Texas and hill country region are sometimes referred to as flash flood alley. The proximity of rich gulf moisture or a graphic lift over the rugged limestone terrain and the availability of convective boundaries provides a favorable environment for heavy precipitation. The hill country's abundance of canyons and gullies and its lack of deep soil to absorb rainwater provides a favorable environment for significant flash flood events, which can surge dozens or even hundreds of miles downstream. One of the most remembered floods in recent Texas history was the Comfort, Texas flood in July 1987, in which 43 passengers were swept away in floodwaters outside a Baptist camp west of Comfort. This happened around 7.45 a.m. when the bus stalled in high water on the road leading from the camp, which then overturned into the Guadalupe River. At the time, the river was undergoing a very rapid rise. Military helicopters eventually arrived at the scene, rescuing dozens from trees and banks. The maximum recorded rainfall was 11.5 inches, 9 miles west of Hunt, with 5 to 10 inch totals common. Hundreds had to be evacuated starting around 2.45 a.m., and rivers surged 15 feet above their normal levels. Another devastating flood occurred during the first four days of August 1978 in that same area. This particular flood involved interaction with an unusually strong cold front and the remains of tropical storm Amelia. 33 fatalities were recorded with millions of dollars in damage. And if you want to go back even further, there was a devastating flood event on May 11th and 12th, 1972. The event which affected Camp Mystic and Kerrville in 2025 was the result of a weather disturbance drifting northeast out of Mexico. This disturbance was associated with a large moisture field that resulted from the remains of Tropical Storm Barry, which moved into northeast Mexico several days earlier. The night before the flood event, early Thursday, an ISS astronaut took this picture of an intense cloud complex northwest of Monterey, Mexico, which showed a sprite rising from a 50,000-foot storm cloud. That gives some idea of the vigorous nighttime convection that was already ongoing across the region. The 700 millibar chart was forecasting a weak mid-level disturbance to move northeast out of Mexico. This was not very well handled by the Tuesday forecast runs, but you can see it here on the Thursday night models, which better captured this feature. A 30-knot low-level jet was forecast to develop. These low-level jets are often associated with severe weather, but they can also help storms ingest large amounts of moisture. Here we also see rich moisture feeding northward with a 14 gram per kilogram mixing ratio contour signifying dew points are approaching the upper 60s at altitudes of about 5,000 feet MSL. By Thursday evening, precipitable water values were in the 2 to 2.5 inch range. In these environments, we usually find very deep columns of high moisture content and a high freezing level, and collision and coalescence processes are more abundant than ice phase processes. There's also less dry air entrainment associated with the downdrafts, which means parcels with richer moisture and more buoyancy are more likely to recycle back into the convective clouds. As shown here, the Del Rio soundings show 2.34 inches of precipitable water, which is at the all-time maximum for this time of year. 
Flood watches had already been posted at 2 p.m. on Wednesday, covering the overnight hours. The Weather Prediction Center, which is in charge of monitoring flood hazards, placed the area in a slight risk of excessive rainfall and stated that areas of flash flooding will be likely across central Texas overnight with very heavy rainfall expected. This was further refined in the evening updates, with the 7 p.m. discussion correctly identifying the high precipitable water values and the unstable air mass and the presence of the low-level jet. All of this created unusual IVT values for this time of year. In other words, integrated vapor transport, which is associated with atmospheric rivers and represents advection of rich moisture by the wind. The bulletin also noticed the low-level jet would likely intersect the outflow pools in a perpendicular fashion, providing a somewhat stationary focus for development with the southward drift of the outflow moving into the low-level jet and providing corridors of thunderstorm backbuilding rather than a more conventional eastward movement for the storm clusters. The afternoon of Thursday, July 3rd, saw scattered storms in the Texas Hill Country, which organized into the evening. By midnight, heavy thunderstorms had matured over Kerr County and were dumping heavy amounts of rain. Precipitation persisted into much of the day as the main upper vortex crossed through the area, and only by late afternoon did the region finally dry out. We take a close-up look at western Kirk County with the WSR 88D radar. The red dot at the center is Camp Mystic, and the blue lines are the creeks and rivers upstream, defining a catchment area for precipitation that had to drain past Camp Mystic. At 10 p.m., storms began to form in the area, mostly around Kerrville. At 10.45 p.m., the first precip began to fall in the catchment area. A second heavier round followed around 11.30 p.m., followed by a third and much heavier round at 12.30 a.m. This quickly covered the entire catchment area with very high rainfall rates, back building to the southwest and overwhelming the rivers into Camp Mystic. The precipitation was relentless and followed by a fourth wave during the 3 a.m. hour. Likewise, this fell over the catchment area for yet another hour. It was only by 4 a.m. that the precip began to decrease, but the damage was already done and a destructive wave was already being carried downstream towards Kerrville to the east. There were no river gauges upstream from Hunt past Camp Mystic, but we can extrapolate backwards. From my reconstruction of gauge data, the flood crest was moving about 5 miles an hour. That brought it into Camp Mystic around 1 a.m. Now this wave may not be the tsunami you'd expect, but all of the gauges showed a rapid rise of about 1 foot every 3 minutes, meaning anyone in the path would have had little time to react. It's certainly possible that some locations saw a much more rapid rise, and that all comes down to the topography and the small-scale details of the wave. Right around 1.14 a.m., a flash flood warning was issued by the Weather Service in San Antonio. After the wave left Camp Mystic, it traveled downstream, reaching Hunt during the 2 a.m. hour. It reached Kerrville around 4 a.m., and there it crested at 4.45 a.m., rising to 23.4 feet. At 5.16 a.m., we saw one of the first local alerts with the police department, then the county and the county sheriff, asking people to move to higher ground. The first National Weather Service flood emergency warning came at 5.34 a.m., stating that automated rain gauges indicate a large and deadly flood wave is moving down the Guadalupe River with a catastrophic damage threat. From a meteorological standpoint, total rainfall from this event was estimated to be about 10 to 15 inches. As of July 6th, 80 people were confirmed dead in the Hill Country with 68 in Kerr County. This includes at least 12 missing children from Camp Mystic with another 12 unaccounted for. A total of 40 are still missing. 
Search and rescue efforts have been underway and have been expanded almost 100 miles downstream towards Canyon Lake. President Donald Trump called the floods terrible and promised federal aid to those affected. Rescues and searches are ongoing at this time. There's been criticism of the warning process, with some saying that not enough was done at the local level. I've also heard comments about why sirens were not sounded. Interestingly, in the 1972 New Braunfels flash floods, sirens were used, but that was in a time without internet and cell phones. And sirens only could cover so much area. In any case, what do you think? Leave your comments, and I hope that you'll join us for an episode of Forecast Lab, which airs two to three times a week, in which we'll talk about weather situations like this and try to learn a little bit more about how they work.